You guys wanted it and it's finally here. We've done lists with the best boss in every Mario game and the worst boss in every Mario game. And today we are taking it another step further and talking about the hardest boss battle from every single Mario game. And we are not stopping at just the mainline Mario games. We're talking spin-offs, the party games, even sometimes Mario Kart because Mario Kart DS indeed had bosses. So that is a whopping 55 Mario games we have for you guys today where we're going to go through each one and tell you which one gave us the most difficult time or at least gave me the most difficult time. So stop what you're doing right now. Make sure you are subscribed or the hardest boss on this list is going to come attack you and take all of your lives. Without further ado, this is the the hardest Mario boss in every single game. Starting with the original Super Mario Brothers, I picked World 2-4 and 5-4 Bowser boss battles because it has a weird ceiling above you. Everything else is pretty basic, you just jump over Bowser or run under him to get the hammer, and his attacks aren't too difficult, but I think what makes this boss so difficult in particular is what the stage has to offer, and when there's a giant ceiling that can bump your head and ultimately run you into Bowser, that can be a problem. For Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, I picked D4 Bowser, which is one of the last challenges of the game. For one, there's two Bowsers on the stage, which is weird, and also floating bloopers in the air, which is also very difficult. So I guess if you technically take the stage into account, this is a very difficult final stage, Bowser aside. But of course, the Bowser battles themselves are also difficult thanks to the room as well, because there's this weird half wall just sitting in the middle of the room, where you kind of have to play Bowser's jump in order to get underneath him. It's just an ugly design room, and it makes it actually extremely difficult. The hardest boss for me in Super Mario Bros. 2 was the final boss, King Ward. It was very difficult to throw the vegetables in his mouth for me, at least when I was a kid, and I found this to be very aggravating, because you have to have perfect aim and perfect timing, while also dodging the bubbles that he'll throw at you and making sure you catch the next available vegetable. What makes this so difficult is that when you throw a vegetable as a bubble's coming out, it will actually bounce off of it and not go into his mouth, and if you wait too long, it'll go past his mouth, and if you do it too early, it'll also go past his mouth. You have to make sure you throw it at the perfect time, which can just be extremely tedious, but also difficult. Ludwig was probably the most difficult boss in Mario Bros. 3 because every time he jumped and hit the ground, he would shake the ground, causing a mini earthquake that would make Mario stand still for a little bit, which could always cause you to get hit by his beam attacks, and this happened even when he was in his shell form. I mean, the screen is just constantly shaking everywhere he's going and moving, which means you're going to constantly have to keep jumping up and down and dodging his attacks. For Super Mario Land, I picked Yorarin because because unlike Tatanga, he has unpredictable patterns where he'll shoot different projectiles in different orders and he'll also have this ball bouncing around the screen the entire time that can easily bump into you. There's a lot going on, none of these bosses are super hard in this game, but I think this one is slightly harder than the rest. For Super Mario Land 2, I pick Wario, the final boss, because there's a lot going into this boss battle. He has three different phases and uses the different items that Mario does in the game as well, like the bunny hood allowing him to float around the room, and also a fire flower allowing him to throw projectiles at Mario. Now most of the bosses in this game are also extremely easy, so this one won by pretty much a landslide. And for Super Mario World, I picked Bowser, because you have to grab his Mecha Koopas and launch them in the air and perfectly time them as he's swooping over in his clown car in order to hit him in the head. And he also has tons of attacks at his disposal, like dropping giant cannonballs and also causing fire to fall from the sky. The difficulty really comes from timing the Mecha Koopa tosses, but overall the bosses in this game weren't that hard as well. Next up we have Mario Pinball Land, and the difficult boss for me was Porky Puffer. Porky Puffer was super duper annoying, because if you hit him at all with the spikes out, he would shoot you across the room, bouncing off of the walls. And before long, your safety pipe would be gone, leaving open the gap, making it very, very difficult to stay alive. Your job is to bounce the bob bombs off of Porky Puffer in order to blow him up, and then have Mario run into him. But this can be very difficult, because it also has baby Porky Puffers going around the room, which means they can block these attacks, so really it comes down to extreme luck sometimes whether the bomb hits him or not. Bowser from Mario Dance Dance Revolution on the GameCube is without a doubt, not even objectively, factually the hardest boss battle in this game. If you crank up the difficulty to the highest it goes, the Bowser boss battle in this game could seriously be one of the hardest boss battles in the entire series. I consider myself pretty good at this game and can complete pretty much every single difficulty level besides this one. I think I may have done it only once or twice and it was with like a D or an F, but I still completed it. But at the end of the day, this is just so fast 
fast pace, not including the fact that you have to also hit the pieces of the rocket in order to technically fight against Bowser, but keeping up with these arrows is just madness. You're doing pretty good. For Mario 64, I picked Bowser once again to be the hardest boss battle because just timing your throw and hitting the bomb spikes in the back of the stage is very, very difficult. Not to mention the fact that the final Bowser boss battle in this game, you have to do it three times. This was always so hard for me as a kid because you had to spin them just enough to get enough momentum, but if you did it too fast, your aim was likely going to be terrible. This was just a hard boss. Now for Mario Sunshine, it was between Phantom Manta and Ely Mouth, but Ely Mouth just left so much impressions on me since I was a kid. But now, since I played the game over 150 times, this is not too big of a deal for me anymore. But I can tell you what, for first timers or really anybody that's just coming back to play the game for the second or third time, this boss will probably always give you a problem because it can be very tricky to maneuver underwater with Mario. But the whole point of this boss battle is cleaning teeth, so you have to switch back and forth between your hover nozzle in order to get out of his mouth and also the regular nozzle in order to spray the teeth, and this can be tricky. The hardest boss in Super Mario Galaxy was Boulder Guys for me, especially during the Daredevil Run comment, where you only have one life. Well, what makes this so difficult is really the hands phase, because when you're trying to swing the bomb booze at his body, lots of the time the booze will hit his hand, and as you wait for the next one, one of the hands will always regenerate, making this extremely difficult, where you'll have to slip in the boo at a perfect angle in order to hit the body, and before long, there will be rocks flinging at you and fists punching at you, and you will probably take a hit one way or another. And the most difficult boss in Mario Galaxy 2 for me was Bowser Jr.'s Boomsday Machine. For this boss, you had to utilize the brand new Cloud Flower ability to make paths in order to reach the top of Bowser Jr.'s tower and crack the top. Now, this isn't too bad, at least for Phase 1, but Phase 2 and 3 is where it gets crazy, especially Phase 3. I remember constantly getting attacked by the tower itself as it's able to move and it grows giant tracks like a tank, so you have to move around the stage continuously grabbing more flowers in order to gain more platforms to get to the top, and it's extremely easy to get hit by any of the moving projectiles that Bowser Jr. is shooting at you, especially the electricity balls, which are able to strike you and take the ability from you, dropping you to the ground, having to repeat the process. Next, we move to the new Super Mario Brothers games. With new Super Mario Brothers DS, I picked Monty Tang. This one seemed to be one of the hardest ones for me because it moves back and forth, has three phases, and shoots multiple things at Mario, including bob bombs and bullet bills, and the fact that it itself is moving in sporadic ways. This was definitely harder than any of the late game bosses for sure. For new Super Mario Brothers Wii, it's definitely Giant Bowser at the end of the game. He chases you, shoots fireballs at you, swipes at you with his hand and also the lava raises at the end, making giant waves form where you have to get to the top of them or you will die instantly. It's still probably one of the most intense giant Bowser boss battles. For New Super Mario Bros. U, I have both of the Bowser Jr. fights. The one underwater can be hard because it's one of the only underwater fights where you have to guide the Dorpedo Ted into crashing into Bowser Jr., which can be hard because you have to follow Bowser Jr. and lead your shots. Where the other one, where he's floating in the sky with his clown car, he has fists that punch at you where you have to either run up his arm to hit him or throw bob bombs at him while he's moving back and forth. He'll try to punch you and punch the stage, also breaking the bricks, bringing you down with it, so it can be very difficult as well. And New Super Mario Bros. 2's bosses are brain dead easy, so of course I gotta go with the final dry Bowser, where he's giant and also shooting fireballs at you as the platforms are raising. This one also isn't too bad, I think the only difficulty raise is when you run out of platforms, is when you keep jumping on a certain section of platforms in one area, you'll have to fly your way all the way to the other side, so if you don't have a Tanuki Leaf, this could be extremely hard as the platforms just might not come up in time. Next we move on to some more 3D games. We have Mario 3D Land. I picked the final Bowser boss fight where you're chasing him down as he's shooting these giant mystical fireballs at you. He's also throwing things at you almost in a Donkey Kong style. Um, but then he's chasing you down the bridge at the very end which you have to make quick decisions to get under blocks, jump over them, or just run through them. 
Next up we have Mario 3D World's Histocrat King and Queen. Now at the very end of the game you'll have a special challenge where you have to fight both of these kings and queens at the same time. Now this can be very difficult especially if you do not have a cat suit because you're going to have to do some massive platforming and make sure you jump off the plates at the right time. And sometimes you can't even climb some of the snakes so you'll have to sit there and wait for a smaller one to get up. But there's a lot of plates that have cracks in them which means they will break and the snakes will bite you and sometimes you're just not high enough to hit the king or the queen and you'll take a shot of damage. This is a very difficult boss battle and it definitely makes for an end of the game challenge. For Bowser's Fury, we have the extra final boss. Now the actual Fury Bowser boss isn't too terrible, it's just repeating everything you've done so far. Hitting his stomach, throwing things at him, and ground pounding on him when you occasionally can, and jumping out of the way of his fire attacks. But where it really gets difficult is when you're riding Plessy, and you have to make your way to the bells and hit him as well. This can be difficult because he is shooting almost every single fireball in existence at you, which means sometimes it's nearly impossible to dodge some of these things coming at you and you're just going to have to get lucky. Getting under the water at the right time and jumping at the right time is a necessity and sometimes it's just going to come down to timing. I know this is against the wall, but for Super Mario Odyssey, I have two bosses. For one, I have Topper on the dark side of the moon. This is the first and easiest boss of the game when you play through the regular story, but in this extra world, this boss can be a nightmare because there's so many hats flying around the stage and you're in zero gravity, which sometimes can mess up your jumps and you will always get hit by one, especially at the very last phase where he just has the giant tower of hats and he spins so occasionally you have to know when to get out of there and when to move at the right second while also still dodging all the hats that are moving in the background. But I also chose the second Lord of Lightning from the Mushroom Kingdom because the stage is full of ice which means you'll be sliding around trying to dodge these electricity shocks and phase 3 is still to me one of the hardest attacks to dodge within this game because there's so much electricity it goes on for so long I mean seriously I have not found a consistent way to make sure I dodge all these even though you'll only get hit once it still is a very powerful very insane attack. Nowadays, none of these Mario Kart DS bosses truly stumps me, but I remember as a kid, Goom Boss was always my consistent nightmare. He always would catch up at the very end and just scare me as he's running beside you. I'd always bump into him. There was always some type of problem with this boss. I remember being just so terrified of the stage because you didn't know when he was going to run up on you. And you had to make sure you hit very tight drifts so that way he would stay behind you. I think it was just more of a scare factor, but I guess this would technically be the hardest boss for me in this game. Moving to Mario Tennis Aces, we have Balsian, which is a mummified Bowser, which you're playing an intense game of tennis with. This puts all your skills to the test, your quick dodge and also your timing as well because if you don't hit his shots at the right time it will start to break down your racket. So lots of slowdown is needed and you have to pay close attention especially with his volley at the end of each part of his life. And then we have Mario Golf Super Rush. Mario Golf Super Rush has some of the weirdest and probably lamest bosses ever. Even though they tried to make bosses in a golf game, it just didn't quite work out. But the hardest would have to be Snow King because there's only three and the others are just brain dead. But Snow King is pretty simple as well. You go around the stage, you pick a bomb, and you hit it at the crystal in the background while slightly dodging some very slow snow attacks from, obviously, the Snow King. And you just kind of hit back one of his powerful attacks by a button timing prompt. That's about it. It's pretty easy, but as far as this game goes, it has to be the hardest. Next we move on to the RPG spinoffs, and I had to ask for Mario RPG The Legend of the Seven Stars because obviously I have not played this one yet if you watched my past videos, but of course everyone comes together to say Kulix. This is apparently one of the most difficult bosses in the Mario franchise, and let alone probably one of the most difficult RPG bosses a lot of people like to mention. He's able to use five attacks at once, has crystals that you have to knock out, and has an extreme amount of health. I mean, for someone that hasn't even played this game all the way through yet, this guy looks terrifying. Next up, we have Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga, and Cacletta's soul is a monster, that's for sure. Especially in the original game, where you don't even get to attack first, and you have one health each, which means if you get hit by any of her, like, three barrages of attacks, you die instantly, and the match can end before you even start it. So, of course, they kind of balance this out with the new game a little bit better, but still, the boss has some incredible moves. It's able to shoot lasers out of its eyes that pause the screen when you have to jump at the right time, it has fire and electricity hands, and you have to take out both the hands and the head before you can even get to the heart. 
Worker Partners in Time, it's definitely both of the Shroob Sisters. I love these bosses too, and they're definitely very difficult. The first one's more quick and utilizes a giant shield that you have to break down in order to attack it, and also her flying chair can be super annoying. She's got lasers that she can shoot out and giant crab legs that she'll try to stomp on you with by dropping the entire chair on you, which timing is a necessity. And then Elder Shroob comes out and utilizes the top screen more with her Shroob UFOs and also has them try to aim at the bros where you will once again have to have really good timing and memory to shoot them down. And then Elder Shroob grows into a monstrosity where you have to take out her legs in order to drop her down and take out the crown, which can be difficult for sure because she can use multiple different attacks at once. If you think that's a lot of bosses to fight in a row, well we're not done yet because you have to fight her soul form sticking out of Bowser where you have to just dodge repeatedly until she ends up hitting herself and killing herself. Next up we have Bowser's Inside Story. I have two of them, the first one Fawful Express. This can be tedious not because the actual boss is doing damage to you but because of the fact that it is trying to get away so it's going to be driving away from you and you have to catch it and you have to defeat it in a certain amount of turns or you lose the battle which means you can only afford to mess up once or twice before the train gets away and when I say mess up I mean you have to make sure you get excellent attacks down because sometimes it can be difficult and the DS not work the way you want it to whether you're blowing in the mic for the fire or you're swiping for the punch also say the Dark Bowser Fawful fight is pretty difficult as well. Dark Bowser himself in the overworld isn't too bad, but with Mario and Luigi, he can be kind of tricky, especially during the scene where he chases you and you have to jump over the black holes. Dreamy Bowser was definitely difficult, but I think the hardest for me was Antasma, but not just any Antasma, Antasma X. It has an extreme amount of health and its attacks are downright mischievous. Also considering the fact that it can upgrade its stats and also heal when it wants, it's just very annoying. The attack that always got me is when it duplicated itself into bats and threw some in the foreground, some in the background, and some in the same plane as Mario and you have to know when to jump and when not to jump. And let me tell you right now. It sucks. And then for Mario and Luigi Paper Jam, it's definitely shiny Robo Bowser, where Paper Bowser and regular Bowser team up and he gets this super mega suit. What makes this so difficult is just, just random attacks that happen. Like after punching at Mario and Luigi, he'll shoot a massive burst of fire at Paper Mario with no warning, and then also another fireball right after it. I mean, this is just a boss where you have to play multiple times in order to understand its attack patterns because there's just no way someone's getting it their first, second, maybe even third time around just because it's so random. Next up we have the Paper Mario series. Starting with Paper Mario 64, I picked Huff and Puff. Huff and Puff was so annoying when I was a kid, I remember just always regaining its health because it would shoot out its little children and also regain them as well. And what was so funny about it is just every time you attacked Huff and Puff, these clouds would pop out ultimately giving him more health every single time automatically. So ultimately the strategy was to hit him very hard as Mario and have one of your side characters use their multiple attack ability in order to take out the babies. This is one that I seriously could not pick. For Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, I mean seriously I feel like everyone online is definitely on a different side for this one. Shadow Queen is the very final boss of the game and it can be extremely hard with all the different hands that it'll shoot out and it's hard to time when to dodge these attacks because you're just covered in a crowd of hands you don't know when to push the prompt, so it can be very hard because of that and the fact that you have to take out multiple different body parts in order to get to the main one. I remember as a kid I was only saved because I got a last second bingo to win the game. However, I never quite made it to Bone Tail after the Pit of Trials and a lot of people are saying that this boss is extremely difficult with poison effect and also the fact that it has an extreme amount of health after all the floors that you already been through, I heard this was a very difficult end of game boss battle. For Super Paper Mario, I picked King Crocus because it's one of the few bosses where you actually have to do some platforming and aiming in order to hurt it, where everything else you can just spam Bowser fire and ride carry around but this time you have to actually pay attention to the falling blocks and jump on them ride them and throw them at crocus's head when it opens up not to mention it eventually flies around the room throwing blades around as well for Paper Mario Sticker Star, it's definitely Bowser, but for all of the wrong reasons. You have to have very specific stickers in order to kind of deal damage and to prevent him from attacking you in the hardest of ways, which means you have to just know what to bring in by just going in here and taking L's repeatedly over and over and over again until you know the exact sticker combination that you need to bring into this battle, which is not fun by the way. 
For Paper Mario Color Splash, it's definitely Black Paint Bowser, but maybe this time the reason is because I suck at the timing. Because for some reason, am I the only ones that couldn't catch the paint at the right timing at the very end when he shoot the giant paintball at Mario? I don't know, I just kept messing up the timing and I remember it just took me multiple, multiple tries in order to get it down for some reason. Let me know if it's just me or not because I just felt like the way he was standing next to Mario was too close and I couldn't tell how fast the paint was going to move and it actually ended up moving a lot slower. But it definitely always got me at that part. And then we have Paper Mario Origami King where scissors probably cut me in half maybe six times in a row. This boss is very very difficult your first couple of times at least once you figure it out it's not too terrible um but it's not only just a timing thing but it's also a planning thing if you break the protectant on the scissors it will have its one shot capability where it will slice you one time and you die instantly there is no redos or anything you're dead not to mention when it comes to cut you it has the ability to juke you out and stop right before it comes at you for a second and you don't know if it's going to do it or not sometimes and it just cuts you anyways i love how there's multiple ways to approach this but you definitely want to make sure you time down that jump or bad things are going to happen. Next up we have the Mario Rabbit games and Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle had the Mega Dragon Bowser battle at the very end of the game and this one actually took me a few turns to get down because you had to calculate how you hit Bowser in perfect ways because you also had to get your team hidden or they would get absolutely destroyed by Bowser. He also has tons of minions on the battlefield in a phase where he'll charge at you with his shell and you have to hide behind a giant metal block in order to make him dizzy. And for Mario Rabbit's Sparks of Hope, it was the stupid giant depleter boss battle. The most annoying enemy in the game, the depleter, they decided to turn into a giant boss battle. It is so incredibly annoying. I haven't played the DLC Tower of Doom yet, and I'm praying these guys aren't in there, at least the giant ones, because goodness gracious, the way they design this character is stupid. It can hit you and heal from hitting you. It can hit you through walls and heal while hitting you. It can move very much around the stage, and it has extreme power. Not to mention, it also has counterattack, and if you have a character that uses counterattack, it will hit you, you'll hit him, and it'll hit you again and gain the hell from hitting you again. It's just a big circle of insanity where it feels like you're fighting two or three bosses at once because it just keeps healing itself. Now let's shoot over to the Mario Party series. With Mario Party DS, I know a lot of people had problems with the Piranha Plant. I don't understand that one 100% because it's the first boss of the game and I didn't think it was that difficult. But Bowser's Block Party to me was probably the hardest because there's multiple different phases and you actually have to play a boss battle. You have to move around the room, dodge all the blocks, and try to find a way to hit the golden Bowser block as it switches transformations. It's a really cool boss battle, but it also can definitely be a difficult one. Now I guess the next just come down to each individual people because based on who you play with and how fun you guys have with each game so these could be games that you love and are not that difficult but for me Mario Party 9 the King bob on boss battle stunk because every one of my friends would always choose what we all want to choose you would think oh we all want the big one but then everybody's like no we're all gonna go for the small one it's just it's annoying and then the boss battle ends up going on forever it's not necessarily difficult by any means, but my friends make it difficult, if that's what I mean. Mega Cheap Cheap from Mario Party 10 is very difficult because it's so simplistic. Yeah, so everybody has three green shells, and you use them up based on how you want to use them, but when you're out, you're out. And every time the Cheap Cheap gets hit, it'll move, which means you have to calculate when to use your shells and how long to wait because you can really set up a good play to make them turn around on your friend really quickly. Mario Party Island Tour has some incredibly easy boss battles, but I guess the hardest would once again be King bob because now you have to create a track that leads to the regular cannon or the gold one, which means it's a little bit of a puzzle solver and you have to move the puzzles around before the time limit is up to find a path that works. So technically this one would probably be the hardest just because it has you thinking a lot more. For Mario Party Star Rush, I put all the Mecha Bowser games, where the first one has you racing your opponents down a track to be the first one to get to the Mega Mushroom, the second one has you running around a grid hitting blocks and dodging Bowser's attacks, and the third one has you kind of doing button presses and prompts in order to dodge rockets and shoot things out at Bowser himself. And for the final category, we have Mario Spinoff. Starting with the Mario vs. Donkey Kong, we have Donkey Kong 94, and I picked the Rocky Valley DK. 
This one was very difficult because you had to pick up the moving creatures in order to throw them at Donkey Kong. The wind was blowing you back and forth, and also a bird is above you dropping egg projectiles, so making a lot of things happen on screen at once. For Mario vs. DK on the GBA, I picked Twilight City plus DK, where you had to hit these switches in order to make the bob go back and forth while also dodging the laser beams. This all comes down to timing and just almost sometimes getting the right luck when the bomb bomb comes down, but this can be very tricky as you're moving up and down very quickly and sometimes the bomb will get stuck in places that just does not help you out. For Mario vs Donkey Kong 2, I picked Jungle Hijinks DK, because not only do you have to chuck the mini Marios at Donkey Kong, but you have to chuck them up on top of the trees in order to make the bananas fall right above him. He's moving very quickly, so not only do you have to hit him with these bananas and dodge and kind of lead your shots, but you have to watch out for the different enemies across the stage. Donkey Kong throwing things at you, the bird flying back and forth, and also the fact that you have these munchers going up and down the vines that will break the mini Marios. Next up you have Jungle Rumble DK from Mini's March again, and it's pretty much the same exact bosses from the previous game, where this one's a lot easier than the other one, but it's still probably the hardest one in this game, where the same objective applies, where you have to knock the bananas on Donkey Kong, but he just doesn't throw many things at you, and also the fact that there's not many enemies on the screen either. Then we move on to Mini Land Mayhem, which I chose Cosmic Adventure DK, because it takes time to calculate where you need your Mini Marios to go, and you'll have to often block off paths in order to protect yourself from the electricity balls that go around the stage which can instantly break your mini Marios. So this boss has a little bit more careful planning than the other bosses in this game. And now we have the rest of the spinoffs. Starting off with Yoshi's Island, I'd say Giant Baby Bowser was the hardest because trying to aim your eggs at his head was kind of difficult because he actually had depth in the stage and you had to know where to aim your eggs and you couldn't just hit him anywhere else on his body. It had to be perfectly on his face and if I believe so, right on the nostril, which was very specific at the time. So after you got down the aim, it wasn't too bad, but as a kid, I remember this one giving me absolute extreme anxiety as he was running up super close and I kept missing eggs. For Yoshi's Island DS, I chose Six Face Sal because not only did you have to aim and perfectly hit the ones that weren't red at the top of the screen, but you had to actually move them with the wheel by jumping on the platforms and spinning it in order to get to the one that you need to hit. So you had to dodge all their attacks, spin the wheel, and also still hit the pink one, which actually was pretty difficult for this game because obviously Yoshi games don't have the hardest bosses, but this one definitely surprised me. Yoshi's New Island was an absolute cakewalk, and every single boss was extremely easy, but I guess if I had to pick the hardest one, it'd probably be Punky the Pokey Prince. Yep, that's an alliteration right there. But what it does is it grows spikes, not allowing you to hit the different segments of its body when these spikes are out. So you actually have to aim sometimes and hit the segments that don't have spikes. And at least it has some projectiles that it shoots at you that you have to dodge. But overall, they're just used as eggs and ammo for Yoshi to keep hitting him. But this is some type of difficulty, at least you have to take out all the segments to get to its head, which kind of adds some challenge. Or you can just jump and hit his head right away and kill it immediately. See what I mean? Like, these bosses are just too easy. For Super Princess Peach, I chose Wiggler. Wiggler is difficult for a lot of reasons, but a lot of the reasons don't have to do with Wiggler himself, technically. Because Wiggler actually is making all these blocks and bricks fall from the sky, but those are the most challenging part, because they're falling down in sporadic ways where you can't see where they're coming from and they will smack Peach in the head quickly. Not only that, but your job is to knock down the pegs in order for them to spring back up and hit Wiggler, and you have to time it down as he runs across the screen. He can also do things like cause smoke to appear on the screen where you have to quickly change your mood in order to blow away all the thick gas that's in the air. But once again, it's the falling rocks that really makes this difficult. Trust me, it's harder than it looks. For Luigi's Mansion, I had two bosses that were very difficult for me. Number one is Slim Bankshot, which was a portrait ghost that was just extremely annoying. With this portrait ghost, you have to hit him with three of the billiard balls that he shoots around the room. The problem is, if you miss one, it will disappear and you have to leave the room and come back in order to reset it over and over and over again, which is just annoying. I wish he hit more in the air so that way you had more chances, but yeah, this just isn't the greatest. Then my second one would be Boo Losses, just because it's so difficult to get all those mini boos in the room. For some reason, I was having problems with it, and even today, every now and then, I do have problems with it. I don't know if it has something to do with the controls or the way the game works, but for some reason, the boo would always just get away at the last second when I'm trying to freeze it, and it would always come down to like two or three boos that I could not get for the life of me as they would fly 
side, kind of like outside of the battlefield, which is just super annoying as well. Next, we have Luigi's Mansion 2, The Dark Moon. The one that definitely gave everyone the most problems, it sounds like, was the Shrewd Possessor Ghost, which was a possessor ghost that took over a giant ice pillar thing and turned it into an ice monster. And as Luigi, you had to fire bombs at the various different portions of the ice in order to break them apart and then eventually his mouth. The problem is the ice tunnel rotates, meaning that your bombs will rotate as well, meaning you have to have really good aim and precision in order to get your timing down to hit these blocks of ice and everybody seems like they hated it online. Now, this was one of those weird situations where it didn't give me much problems, but I definitely can see where people would have issues with this. And then finally, number 55, we are at Luigi's Mansion 3, and probably my least favorite, worst boss, and the hardest one in Luigi's Mansion 3 is Clem. Clem was just hard because of how awkward this boss was. You didn't fight on solid ground, instead you were on a raft on water and you had to suck and blow around in order to make sure that you could get to where you're going. But your job is to grab Clem, throw him into the spikes in order to pop his raft, go all the way back to the ladder, climb up, chase him all the way down, and then suck him up and keep repeating this process, which was extremely tedious. But it got difficult because you kept getting bumped into the spikes, which then would shoot Luigi all the way to the top part, making you have to come all all the way back down the ladder, climb back in a raft, jump back in, and try again, which was just annoying and difficult at the same time, which is just not a fun combination. And that is my list of the hardest boss from every single Mario game. Of course, this is based on my opinion and some of the information I've heard from you guys online, so thank you so much for tuning in. If you guys have your own opinion, feel free to let me know what you thought were the hardest bosses from these games down below. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Mario and Nintendo in general and like always i will see you all on the next one see you guys